everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Now I took a bit of a vacation from YouTube for like the last two weeks so I'm back, I'm feeling refreshed, and I have another Wheel of Time news video for all of you. Now we have two pieces of information that are more kind of like hype information than really news and then one major piece of news information to discuss today. But before getting into all of that let me give a quick thank you to this video's sponsor NordVPN. Check the link in the description of the video to get a major discount on VPN services, but we'll talk more about them later. This video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red, with major spoilers running all the way through The Great Hunt. If you have not finished the second book of the series, consider holding off watching this until you have. If you don't care, you've been warned at least. So kicking things off, we're going to talk about something super important, and here it is. Rafe Judkins had pancakes for breakfast three days ago. Now, all joking aside, uh, the fandom has been clamoring for news so much that we're just following like a little every little thing that people do. So Rafe Judkins getting pancakes, somebody might try to read into that and report it as news. In that line, the first two things I want to talk about here are a little bit more serious than that. These are really just pieces of rumors that we've been hearing that we can kind of read between the lines and put some things together on that I think are kind of cool and are get you a little bit hyped for the show. The first of these pieces of news comes from Wheel of Time book consultant Sarah Nakamura. Now on her Twitter the other day, or I should say her Twitter fleet, apparently that's a new thing on Twitter now, she posted a caption and credit to Geeky Eerie for screen capping this. The, the caption said, this is me being really excited about things that I can't talk about, but I want to talk about, and I have no one to talk about with. Now I know there are plenty of volunteers, but I'm not going to talk to you either. Let my excitement be a guide for your excitement. How about that? So, it's weird that Sarah says pretty much nothing here, but for some reason, her excitement certainly has me excited. So, for those of you who are not aware, Sarah is a longtime book fan and member of the Wheel of Time community. She was selected by Rafe Judkins right at the beginning of production to join their team as a book consultant to basically help the show stay on topic with the books. She is still a major part of the community. She frequents lots of Wheel of Time creators, Daniel Green, the Dusty Wheel. She's pretty much always in the chat for the Dusty Wheel. And she pops up in discussions all the time. Now, she's obviously under an NDA. She can't talk about anything related to the show. But she has read all the scripts, and she's been at filming and all of those things. Now, this statement leads to the next question. That is, what is she so excited for? Well, there's tons of possibilities. But I figured I would give you my likely candidates. I think, first of all, this may just be that she saw a trailer for the show. We know that most of the filming is completed for the series, and the post-production work is pretty much completed as well. So it's entirely possible and very plausible that the first trailers are in production or may have already been filmed, and she saw it. That would, of course, get me excited. I would imagine it would get her excited. Now, my second idea, though, is actually the one that I think that this is, and it's more plausible, but... I'm going to get to that one in a minute. We're going to move on to the next piece of news and come back to that. So that second piece of news that isn't really news is something that showed up on WattSeries.com's Facebook group. Now, WattSeries.com is a Wheel of Time news website that you should definitely follow and check out for all things Wheel of Time news. Now, keep in mind, everything that I'm about to mention is completely unconfirmed, total hearsay. So this is not confirmed. It's not even really substantial news. But a man jumped into the WattSeries.com Facebook group and made a series of posts claiming to be one of Amazon's research surveyors and he that he had been for years. Now, he claims to have watched a preview of three episodes of The Wheel of Time. He stated that he's not a book reader, but the three episodes that he's seen of the story make him really excited and says that this preview is one of the most exciting that he has seen on Amazon. Now, he basically says nothing about the series after giving an opinion that he thinks it's going to be good, and there's no way to confirm whether this is accurate or not, but let's read between the lines a little bit here. Aside from the fact that there is no way to confirm this, the first question I would think would be is, is it plausible that episodes would be complete enough to show in a preview? And I think the answer to that is definitively yes, as most of the first six episodes of the show were completely filmed, that we know that post-production was worked during the COVID shutdown, so that's very possible. The second question is, is it plausible that someone would have been selected to preview the show and give an opinion on it? The answer to that is also yes. Given what we know about the production so far and the inside sources saying that they're really just left with reshoots to do, uh, I think that it's possible that sample audiences have been chosen to give feedback. 
that's a very common practice, especially before doing reshoots, is to get an audience's reaction to your show or your content and see if there's anything that you maybe didn't get a point across or something needs to change or it wasn't clear. That's what they use these people for. So these people absolutely exist, and it's very possible that this man is one of them. It's also possible with the timing because we know that this is, if they're looking to do reshoots, this is the part that they would be having people watch it to see if those what are necessary for that. So what do we take away from this? Well, if true, it's awesome that a non-book reader loved it. Because love it or hate it, guys, this show is not being made for Wheel of Time fans uh, or people that have read the books. It's being made so that Amazon can make a whole crap ton of money and appeal to a very large audience. That's why it's being made. And that includes mostly people who did not read the books. So Game of Thrones became popular because it pulled in a crowd that had not read the Song of Ice and Fire books. Now, if this preview of the show has a non-book reader super excited about it, that's a positive going forward about the show. The other thing that I pull from this, let's get back to Sarah Nakamura now. My guess is that what she's excited about is she saw the exact same preview of those three episodes that this guy is talking about. It's one thing to read the scripts and watch the stuff get filmed. It's something completely different to watch a close to finished product and see that book that you've been waiting for for years on screen. That would be my guess. I think it fits with the other information that's out there. Again, if this is true from this guy, it would make total sense that Sarah just saw those three episodes. And the timing of that is that she posted that roughly a week before he posted his. So it's probable that Sarah probably saw it first. I think that's very, very possible, and I think it would make a ton of sense. And obviously, if you were Sarah, you would be dying to talk to somebody about what you saw, but she can't, and that's rough. But that's what she gets for signing up. She gets to know, and we don't. So, hey, I bet you that's what it is. I'm curious what you all think. Now, before getting to the final piece of major and actual news, <laughs> let's talk about the video sponsor, NordVPN. VPN services are absolutely vital if you are a couple things. If you're a user of the internet, if you do online banking, if you travel and use the internet, I think most of you fit into one of those categories. What it does is it protects your web browsing, keeps nefarious entities from seeing what you're doing, including your local internet provider. They can track everything you do, everywhere you go. This prevents that. It keeps people from tracking you down. Uh, additionally, a VPN is going to let you log in from a different country than what you live in, like log into the internet sort of thing. So if you wanted to watch, let's hypothetically say you lived in the UK and you wanted to watch American Netflix, you could log in from Chicago on your VPN and you would appear like an American on Netflix. And now you get to watch American Netflix. It's pretty darn cool, guys. That's what VPNs do. So naturally, VPNs are normally really cheap. So it's a good thing for you to have anyway. However, if you don't have one, NordVPN is going to give my viewers like a major, major discount on VPN services. All you have to do is click the link in the description of the video. Go there. You're going to get some crazy percentage off. It's awesome. It's worth it. I've used it for years. You should get it. Let's get back to the video. Now, let's move on to the last piece of news, and this actually really is news. According to WattSeries.com, we have a new filming location for the Wheel of Time television production. Now, again, this information comes courtesy of WattSeries.com. Now, they discovered a local Spanish news site based in Segovia, Spain, that is reporting that between the dates of November 30th and December 2nd, the Wheel of Time production will be taking place in Alcazar, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Castle, in Segovia. The reporting says that they're going to be filming a battle of sorts, which is interesting. We'll get to that in a second. But let's take a look at this castle. So, damn, uh, that looks awesome. Uh, one of the worst things about living in America, in my opinion, is that we don't have anything that looks like that. Uh, anyways, I digress. Uh, I think the first thing to address here is that this sort of confirms that the production in the Czech Republic shut down due to COVID and wrapping up or wrapping up filming, whatever they're calling that. That doesn't mean that filming is completed. This doesn't appear to have been like a last second change, like they just kind of panicked and went here instead of finishing in the Czech Republic. Rather, this seems like it was a planned location. And so what does that mean for it? Well, my assumption here is about the battle. Uh, that This is either Tarwin's Gap, some variation of it, something like that. Now, what do I mean by variation? Well, it's possible that rather than filming this, that battle at the end of Eye of the World in Tarwin's Gap, that they could alter the story a little bit and have it be more of a siege of Faldara. Maybe not all the characters go to the eye. Maybe a couple of them stay behind in Faldara, and so we can follow two different things happening simultaneously, because it might be boring in that final episode 
to just basically watch all of the characters that we know move together into the blight and stay at the eye of the world. So I think having different characters with different stakes happening at the same time uh, and having Rand kind of jump back and forth and maybe uh, lift the siege uh, would make some sense. Now, again, that's just me speculating, but that would make sense filming a battle at a castle, right? So this could, or it could just be an entirely new battle that we don't know of. Uh, there are going to be some alterations. I think that could make, that would have a narrative reason uh, for that to happen. So I think it's possible. I think it's going to be difficult to say, though, just based on a press release and a picture of a castle. So I'm curious what you all have to say about that. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments of the video. Now, the other thing that this means is that there are probably other filming locations that we don't know about given that we just found out about this. So, and that might have even been stuff they filmed at earlier on. So perhaps they filmed or will be filming shorter scenes in other locations outside of the Czech Republic. Now the ramifications of that are a bit important as well. Now remember that we don't have a released budget from Amazon. What we were going on is a rough figure of 90 to $100 million of a budget for the first season based on tax credits that the production is getting in the Czech Republic. So. That's the amount of money we know they're spending in the Czech Republic. Now, the fact that we know there is filming going on outside of the Czech Republic means that they are probably spending money there too. That's an undetermined amount of money, but it's more than what we thought, which, guys, that's, think about this. If it's more than 90 to 100, more than 8 to $10 million an episode, we're getting into the potential for 12 to 15 million an episode. That's a lot of money. That's that's comparable with the last season of Game of Thrones. So that's nuts. Now, either way, I don't think there's any way to look at this news other than positive because that castle's beautiful, the budget is probably gonna be higher, and the show still seems to be on schedule. So what do you think of the new location? What do you think of those earlier rumors we were talking about? Definitely let me know in the comments of the video. Also guys, I am streaming on Twitch now. Um, I am like a total noob on Twitch, but it's a really cool live stream uh, setup. I can do a lot more things with it. And so what we do there, if you've never been on Twitch, it's basically if you like my live streams on YouTube, I do them there now. Um, we're going to talk about the Wheel of Time. I get to make maps with you guys helping me make them. We've done a couple of them already. We play games, do trivia on the Wheel of Time. I give away some prizes. And we generally talk about whatever the hell we want. So it's a lot of fun. We can swear. Not that that's, yeah, we can do that. Uh, but it's free to use. It has a lot more functionality for me with live streams. So I'll be doing a lot more of them there. All you have to do is head to twitch.tv forward slash what sign up for an account and follow me there. Uh, you'll get notified when I'm live, which I'm going to be doing quite a bit and at kind of random times. So definitely check that out. Also make sure to follow my Twitter. Uh, that's my main social media. So you can find out everything about videos being released on the channel to when I go live on Twitch and me talking about random crap. Please like this video by smashing that like button to help with the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new content. A lot of you watch these videos and are still not subscribed to the channel, so make sure to subscribe if you have not already. Check out the Patreon if you love what we're doing here and you would like to support us. It's the most consistent form of income for the channel and all of it goes back into helping improve the content, improve the website, Thank you to everybody who's already supporting me. You can see like a huge list of them at the end of all of my videos. Uh, get your name on there. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?